Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. It seems like it's been a week. It's only been a couple minutes for us. Uh, we've got two beers here in front of us. They are basically the same beer, but they have two different oh. <laughs> brewing processes. I don't know if, like, I should have maybe warned you a little bit, but uh, inspired by a kit that we received and actually gave away, I did my own no-boil beer, okay. and that is what you have on your oh, right. Okay. It is a smash, it's the same smash beer format, but uh, two crucial differences. One, absolutely no boil. So I did, um, I did play around with the, the amount of water I used in the mash so I could get to kind of a, a 1050 gravity. Cause I think that if I had used the full, like two gallons, sorry, yes, two gallons to two pounds of grain, probably would have been, you know, maybe 1040 something in terms of starting gravity. So I, I brought down the water a bit, took a gravity reading. After a, an hour long mash, um, the uh, starting gravity was 1056 on this no boil brew. Good job. Okay. And the only other thing I would say, the, the hop schedule was the, the same, except for instead of a 15 minute to go in the boil edition, of uh, seven grams, I actually did a mash hop. So after milling my grains and adding my water to get to that 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius mash temp, I added my seven grams of Mistral hops right at that moment. So it kind you, of- You are an innovator, my friend. So mashing with hops in there, I'm not, I mean, not sure what that really got me, but just more contact time rather than like where I did add, you know, again, at the end of the boil, at the end of the mash, and when it was chilled down to fermentation temperatures, um, I added 15 grams of hops, the Mistral hops, to that, for, and then I pitched my yeast. And I'll say like that the, uh, the yeast, the yeast, of course, US05, is what I used for the uh, smash beer. I always use US05 just if it's a neutral strain and I have a lot of it. Um, the, uh, the, the amount of time, a very short amount of time it took for the no boil to actually start fermenting. I'd say like within eight hours, yep. I started seeing like major foam krausen coming up. Yeah, because um, you had a lot of protein in yeah, there. That was like, yeah. like, wow, okay, this, the no, no problem of like something else taking over because it only took a few hours to get it going. Did you so, pitch the, just one package of yeast? Well, uh, it's it's um, did you? It's it's a segment of that packet. So it's, okay, it's, okay, well, okay, all right. I was just yeah. wondering if like you thought to yourself, well, I'm not going to boil it. I'm going to make sure I outcompete with like a full package. Of nah, yeast or it's it's four okay. grams of yeast, the same as the, the the smash beer. And then you know with with the day three of fermentation and added another seven grams of hops to it. So I had a little taste before it came over. Um, it, it tasted, I was gonna say like, what's the big difference? I was gonna ask you, but like, I didn't actually want to subject to that. Cause like, I'm not sure how good this is, <laughs> but I thought that if I revealed the secret, you could say like, okay, let's talk about the differences between I'm, um, boil versus non-boil. Basically, so it's basically the same beer. Oh boy. You mashed, you collected wort. Chilled wort. You chilled it from mash temp, you chilled it down. So you didn't even bring it up to say, like, you know, 165 or 180 to try to pasteurize it. You just nope. went with your mash temp and then you Ooh. chilled it. And this is what you have. Remarkably, <laughs> despite that, remarkably, <laughs> um, it's not like um, phenolic or like what you'd perceive to be like um, to have a wild yeast component or... Uh, uh, or any other type of contamination, at least at this stage in the game, as far as its age goes. Sure. Um, I get on the aroma, definitely some like grass and hay-like mm. characteristics, yep. right? Yep. Um, I do not get any of the fruit quality that is in this aroma. Yeah. I mean, if it's there, it's subtle. It's almost like what I was speaking to before about that, that spice component that that maybe that it's that maybe that's what I'm getting here is that part of this hop that hasn't been volatilized away um, from a boil. Yeah, 
is taking over. Um, the, f <laughs> the flavor of the hops and the no, no boil, <laughs> very like. It's more of the same, but I get like. Um, strong herb. I get, um, it's much more herbal. A little minty. I almost get, get, there's a mint quality to it. I almost get, um, my brain is firing off on, um, have you ever had, uh, not alfalfa sprouts, but pea, but pea sprouts. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sprouts. A little bit of that in there. Yeah. But 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 I can see your face. But I want to assure the listeners at home for for this for this brew, dude. It's not unpleasant. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not wildly unpleasant. It's not like unpleasant, but it's not when you great. before you really got into the fact that it was a no boil, and I smelled it. I'm like, well, this is odd, and I tasted it. Like, but I I was at no point was I put off by this beer. Mm. Um, now, that being said. Now that I know what it is, I, I'm not 100% sure that I would um, pony up to the bar and have like three or four pints of it, but it is very interesting. And um, if you told me this was some sort of Patters beer or, um, you know, Belgian wit that went wrong or something, I don't, you know, I would, I would buy it. I would buy into that story and go, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not awful, but I'm really blown away at how different the hop character is here versus here. Of course. There's really no fruit character there. Yes. Yes. And I think there's just, you can tell that the hops do transform based on high temperatures. Yeah. You know, I think that we can't discount how much um, flavor I'm getting out of that first 15, that 15 minute boil. Yeah. Yeah. Hop yeah. too. Extraction. You know, and then, the, and the extraction at flame out, you know, I mean, that's nuts. It's, it's probably a little bit uh, lower than boiling temperature, but still some, you know, some changes happen with the, the hop aroma and flavor yeah. based on that high temperature. Yeah. And with this really the highest it ever got was, you know, again, 150 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. So, you know, that's what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And and you're right. It is sprouty. It is, you know, health food store. It's it's, it's almost. I guess <laughs> you would bread call this. Sandwich. This is like raw ale almost. Yeah. I guess that right. Yeah. Um, I've always in my mind been like, I'm really not interested in trying to go down that raw ale route. I I know in the past we've seen a few comments. Have you guys tried raw ale? Right. And I've always just been like. I'm not really interested in giving that a try. Um, I have nothing against it. I just, but man, I, the flavor dynamic is is interesting. It's almost like it's almost um, it's almost like a strange saison or like a beer de garde or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beer de garde is probably even more on point than the saison yeah. aspect of it. It's not yeast derived flavors. It's definitely hop derived flavors, and it's hop derived flavors that are have not been affected by high heat. Yeah. I don't hate it. I, it's very interesting to drink. Um, I think I said, I don't know if we said it a few videos ago, but I know we talked about it off camera. Uh, I was just having this same type of, I made the same statement to my brother-in-law not too long ago. This is one of those things where as a, as a beer connoisseur, I'm totally digging and I want to keep tasting it and, and dissecting it and digging into it and trying to understand what it is I'm tasting as a beer consumer. You know, less so, yeah. but I don't hate it. But yeah. I don't hate it. it. It's really what a very interesting experiment to do this side by side. So now we got to go back and redo the whole Smash series, boil no boil. <laughs> At least we got content for another four or five years. <laughs> yeah, um, who's going to be into that? Here's another retread. Wow. <laughs> so. All right, well, I guess I know who's getting the gallon of my no boil beer. It'd be interesting to see you just hold on Not to that me. and see if it starts to change and yep. dry itself out and get more carbonated. I'll, I'll hold on to it. Yeah. Again, this is forced carbonated, same process in yep. the packaging. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I, you know, of course, tried to do a close transfer as best as I could. Yeah. And then, you know, everything's sanitized on yeah. that side. It's interesting. It. It's hard to say being in two different glasses as far yeah. as like color. optical depth yeah. goes, but th but there is, this one does appear to be lighter in color. Yes. Uh, to, to be totally fair about it, maybe, you know, later on I can try to figure out how to, you know, really better quantitate that. But they do seem to be, this does seem to be a little lighter in color, which makes sense mm. from a boiling standpoint. Yep. Um, so this has been insp inspiration from you, the viewer. This has also been inspired by the no boil kit that we tried out uh, a little bit earlier this year. Um, always wanted to give it a try. I, I, I did try 
something where I had, it was the last of my sparge, and I put that aside, I had a gallon worth of wort, put that aside. Yeah. Tasted a little bit like this, but even, th of course, thinner. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get the, the gravity up so that it would mesh well with what I, how I was hopping it. Yeah. I wonder if I had brought down the hopping level so it was just a little bit, we would get less of that hay sprouty flavor in the beer. Yeah, I think that hay sprouty thing is also coming from stuff in the malt that you didn't volatilize out. Okay. Right. And I True. think that, and the difference between this and the no boil kit is that those no boil kits have been sanitized. Mm. I mean, they've been, they've been pasteurized. Yes. True. Right. This yep. is, this is raw wort. <laughs> I mean, fermented, right. I mean, this yep. is, this has not been pasteurized. I mean, you can make an argument that at 154, you're getting some level of pasteurization there. Yep. But I know if I leave my mash tun full of grain overnight or for two or three nights, cause I don't clean it out when I'm done brewing for whatever the reason, it's, it is, this is way better than that. It is. <laughs> uh, so. so there you go. Um, certainly for the beer connoisseur in your life, uh, if you're willing to try, you know, making a small batch of uh, raw ale, no boil ale, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did this for experimental purposes only. I certainly probably will not be you know, bringing this out on the old 4th of July barbecue or something like that. But I will do what Mike said. Maybe I'll even take it out of the fridge um, and, let, and let the keg just sit at uh, room temperature or basement temperature and, and see if it does change over time. It should, right? Um, and maybe we can uh, see how that progresses over the next like month or two months and uh, try it then. Um, it should change. And... Um, you know, that will be interesting to, to try as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully you like this video. We do it for the dash. I mean, I'm, you know, doing experimentations all the time. If you're like, all right, cool. It's almost like we do the experiment, so you don't have to. Um, interesting beer for sure. Uh, I don't think this has a wide mass appeal. Certainly would rather have a boiled beer. Um, but if you're willing to give it a try, it's interesting, and maybe there's something there from, um, you know, more of a see how time affects this particular beer's flavor and appearance um, as uh, time goes on. So, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers. I'm going to try it with this one instead. <laughs>